Hi, this is Lori from Shoe Shoe Paper Art, and in honor of National Teddy Bear Day, which is September 9th, I made this cute little teddy bear pocket. Mine has um, gummy bears as the treat, and it'll, it's big enough. You can fit lots of different things inside, and he's really easy to make. So um, let's get started. On my blog, you will find the pattern, and you can print it off, and I just cut out the pattern to use. My felt pieces for a bear this size, this length, is um, four and eight by five. The pattern, you can make it as long as you want, and in fact, you'll see that this one's a little bit longer than the felt, but you just line up the ears there close to the top so that you have room to draw around them, and it can be as long as you want it to be. You can just cut your felt longer. Um, You'll need to figure out what works best for drawing on your felt. Um, a pencil will work just fine on some felt. This particular piece, um, this ballpoint pen worked the best. So it'll just depend on what kind of felt you have. You might need a marker for the kind of felt that you um, have to use. It just, it just depends. You'll just have to kind of test it and see. So after you have it um, drawn on, let's see here, let's, it'll look like that, and you'll just need to do that twice, so it'll look like this when you get it cut out, and here's my, the one I, I have one eye on, <laughs> to kind of get ahead there, um, before we go any further, I might mention that when you print out the pattern, you might look for this cute little bear tag as well. I made a little card to go with my bear, so um, that will be available on the blog post as well. All right, the next thing on our um, little bear is let's go ahead and talk about the arms. The arms are cut from two pieces of felt that are 7 8 inch wide, and I start out with them being two inches long to give me a little bit of room to work with. So here is a piece that's 7 and 8 by 2 inches long, and I knew that I wanted to round them off, so I just used a little die circle to lay on my piece, and again, I drew around that edge, and then just used my scissors to round that off. Now, as you had to kind of look and see what kind of thing a pen or a pencil might draw on your felt, you'll also probably need to play around with scissors too. Not all scissors are created equal. Um, it just so happens that these embroidery scissors work really well with um, felt. So you can see how that's rounded off. And I have two here ready to go. So those will be the arms. All right, let's talk about the face. I used buttons for the eyes. So let me get, let's see, where's my other button here? There it is. Okay. And the nose started out as a heart, so I'll talk about that here in just a minute. But let's talk about putting buttons on. Um, a long time ago, when I was a lot younger, um, there was a lady named Mrs. Graham who made clothes for me, and she also gave me a few sewing lessons. And one of the lessons that she did for me was how to sew on buttons. And um, she promised me that if I sewed buttons on this way, that they would not ever come off. And so far, that has proven true. And that's in, gosh, about 30 years. If I have to replace a button on my husband's shirt or on my own clothing, it stays on perfectly. So I think I kind of trust her on that. Um, kind of figure out where you want everything to be. I just kind of placed it on, and it doesn't need to be um, straight. You can see here on the one that I did, the eyes are kind of, um, they're not straight. One's kind of above the other and the nose is turned a little bit. Just something that's cute to you. So um, let's take a look at this and maybe we'll kind of do it just a little bit off. So maybe about right there. 
Okay, I have black thread and um, it is doubled and knotted at the end. This is about the only time that Mrs. Graham used a double strand of thread because I think most of the time you just don't. But with buttons, she always did. So I'm going to hold that in place and come up from the bottom into the, one of the holes and go back down. And I'm going to do that twice. And then will come the little trick that Mrs. Graham taught me. Well, let's see if I can, there we go. Now, for the little trick, you're going to come back up but not go into a hole. So I'm going to come up underneath the button. Oops, let's see if I can do that. There we go, just out like that. And then I'm going to make a loop around the button and then come up underneath so that it's going to make a knot around the button and pull it tight, just like that. And then I'm going to go up into one of the buttonholes and back down, just like that. And then on the back, I'm just going to run that through. Oops. Let's do that one more time because I kind of had a mess there. And you can see I'm not, I'm not real neat. Okay, come back through, make a knot. And then one more step. Bury that in the middle there. I'm not going through the top, just through the one layer of the felt and then cutting that off. Okay, that's the trick to buttons not coming off. <laughs> okay, for the nose, I um, you could start with a triangle. I just had these little die cut hearts and I'm going to, to use these to make my nose. I'm going to cut off the two top scallops of the heart, just like that. And then I'm just going to kind of round each side, taking off those points until it looks a little more like a nose. You may have to play around with it just a little bit to get it to look like how you want it. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And kind of decide about where I want it, okay, maybe something like that. And I am just going to take a couple of stitches to hold it in place. I don't have a lot of thread left on here, but I think I can make it work. I'm gonna go ahead and knot the end. Hold that in place. And I'm going to come up into the nose and I'm going to go back down just as close as I can to the hole I already made. And I'm going to do that just at each little corner. Now I'm going to pick up my other piece here and um, line it up. Now right now I'm not going to worry about the top being perfectly the same. I'm just going to line up the sides and the bottom and kind of clip those together just to kind of help hold them in place. ahead and look and see where I want the arms as well. Okay. Does that look pretty good? I might want this little arm moved over just a tiny bit. Okay. So I'm going to clip this one on. And I'm going to see about where I want that one. I'm kind of just lining up his hands in the middle of 
uh, his body and I see that it's hanging off a bit so I'm just going to cut that little bit off and clip the other arm on. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and, whoops, I can get all those layers together, lined up decently. Okay. Okay, actually, I think I'm gonna move these arms down a little bit, because I'm thinking about, I'm gonna slip that heart in, and I don't want the heart to be up over his nose. So let's move those arms down just a tiny bit. I'm going to go ahead and put just a tiny bit of glue and glue those hands together where I want them. Just like that. Okay, now at this point, you could either, if you don't want to do the blanket stitch, you could definitely use a different stitch or you could even sew it on your sewing machine to make it really quick and easy. But I kind of think the, the blanket stitch is really cute. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, I'm using um, DMC floss, all six strands. There is a knot on the end and I'm going to start the first stitch by coming up between the layers so that I can hide the knot. Um, I might mention that I am just not very good at gauging distances. And um, so I created this little cheat thing. This is a piece of paper. It's a fourth of an inch wide. And I put a little mark a fourth of an inch from the edge. And I use it to at least get somewhat um, even stitches. They're still not even, but <laughs> it helps a little bit. Okay, so I'm only going to hold the top layer and come up from the back. Now let me also men mention that blanket stitch can be done a couple of different ways. And I think I even kind of do it backwards because I'm actually left-handed and I'm doing it with my right hand. So um, you might want to Google uh, blanket stitch and look at some YouTube if you're not sure um, how to do it. Okay, so I've come up in between. I'm going to come up through both layers back through the exact same hole I just had. And then I'm going to leave this little loop and I'm going to come up from the bottom and then just to make sure this stays where I want it, I'm going to come back up through one more time, only on this first stitch, okay? And then I'm going to um, pull it tight. All right, now I'm gonna use my little cheat sheet here, and I'm going to lay it on top of that stitch I just made, and I'm going to come back up through both layers. Here's my little loop, and I'm going to come up through and pull it tight. Okay, let's do it one more time. I'm going to lay on my little cheat sheet here, which you do not have to use. It's just something I need because I'm not very good at it. And pull it tight. Okay. I can just keep moving this down to hold Let's do one more just to be, okay, one up through both layers. Okay, and of course he does not need to be perfect. That's part of his charm is that he's not perfect. Okay. And I'm going to keep going all the way around, stopping at his other ear. Okay. And then all I have to do is slip in this little heart and whatever treats I want, and he's done. So, um, really pretty easy. Remember that you can find the pattern on my blog and also the little printout to make a little tag or card at shushupaperart.com. Thank you for joining me.